Well, I've been up since 4 a.m., but good morning to you. Um, okay, so this is day one. <sighs> this is my pretty incredible Airbnb. I'll give you a tour at some point, but I'm getting ready. Um, I'm doing the night dive of the manta rays tomorrow. So today I'm going to do two steps, snorkeling, and then move on to uh, going to the volcano to see some cool lava glowing and uh, yeah I'll just get ready and uh, we'll get going
in the town hall of Sydney. So people coming back and forth, shopping, having coffee, whatever. And I made myself play. And it was terrifying at first. And I started with one piece of, of uh, music that I knew really well. And I started with five minutes and then I left. And then I came back like a week later. It's like, okay, let me stick through it. I'm playing that same piece that I know really well. And that time I just played it the whole thing. And it was so tough to see everyone sort of like watching me and looking around and stopping and I kept going. And then I started practicing pieces that I didn't know, which meant a lot of mistakes. And people were still walking by and stopping and then leaving and you know. And slowly but surely I just accepted that and absorbed that and the discomfort starting going away a little bit. Not completely, I'm not gonna lie. But it just became this thing that I was a lot less afraid to do. So now when I play in front of my friends, I always have a little bit of uh, <laughs> interestingly it builds up. It's not at the beginning, but as I go, I build up the pressure of I'm doing so well. Now I don't fuck it up, you know. Um, but it's fine now. And it's not this thing that I would dread to do if, if I, I were to do it again. So, you know, it's it's like dipping my toe um, right outside of the boundaries of my comfort zone. And, and then dipping my whole foot. And then going in and then diving in. And then all of a sudden, it's not that discomfortable anymore. And there might still be fear that's there, but it's okay. Now I'd love to know from you all, how do you think about your comfort zone and are there any things that you would love to do that you haven't given yourself permission and is there any way that you could find little steps to lean into the discomfort, do it afraid, do it anyway. of coffee. I usually don't drink coffee this late, but I came back from my snorkel. I have my snorkeling hair. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to the Volcano National Park to spend the evening there and uh, hopefully see some, some lava action. at the National Volcano National Park and the plan for tonight is to wait until it's dark to see the glow of the crater. Uh, it is called the Halemauma crater. Oh, that's not good. It is called the Halemauma crater. Hopefully that's right. And it's 
not a huge walk, it's like 100 meters. So tonight is more gonna be about wait and see the glow from the theater. zone as something that you get out from and then come back in because I think it may lead to people hurting more than going in so let's imagine for example that I all of a sudden signed up for a major concert that I would perform at after never ever daring to sing in front of anyone that would be pretty terrifying. I might just shit my pants and feel terrible after it and then decide that's it. I am never ever ever singing in front of anyone. And so I think the very drastic binary getting out of the comfort zone might be hurtful in that way. Whereas when you think about expanding it, the goal is really not to for it to be a one-off moment but, but rather just make it larger and larger at a, with very small steps yeah is gonna be an, a wonderful delightful overdose of feeling so blessed and so lucky and so grateful I my mission statement my personal mission statement is to lead a full rich authentic life and I don't think it gets it gets better than this but I think it does which is the, the, the crazy thing it just feels like it's infinite and I feel grateful and 